How's it going everyone? So one of the most common questions that I get is how do you get ideas for your toy photography or how do you even stay motivated to take photos when you just don't feel like taking photos or that motivation, that kind of thing. So in this video, I'm gonna really be getting into what I believe to be the identity of toy photography, which is just going out with a bunch of figures and no expectations and just taking some shots. at one of my local parks here. I love this place. It's called Peebles Island. There's a bunch of great spots to shoot. There's some really great trails. The lighting can be beautiful here and uh, I'm also at the end of the day so there's perfect lighting. And I've just got uh, my bag that has some figures. I'm going to go over what I've got, uh, my camera, and then just a couple other things. And what we're going to do is just go for a walk, go for a hike, keep an eye out for some things that look cool that could work for a toy photo and take the toy photo. I have no expectations of what I want to get, what I want to do. I think that is the most real way of coming up with great creativity is just letting things happen instead of forcing yourself to think about things. So let's just see what kind of figures I got and then let's go for a walk and take some shots. So I've got my camera bag and the camera that I'm using. Uh, a couple extra lenses. I've got my normal small bendy tripod. Got my bigger tripod just in case I need that. Uh, I've got some atmosphere aerosol right there. I've got a big bag of figures. I also brought my light reflector. Little sticks are always very handy. I did bring one Loom Cube, my Panel Pro 2.0. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll need it, but uh, you never know if I need some extra lighting. And I did do a whole review on this last week, so if you're interested in that video, that is uh, going to be linked in the description as well. So I specifically tried to bring figures that I know would work in the outdoors, you know, just so that everything fits. So I've got my uh, Ash Ketchum SH Figure Arts. I've got a NECA Jason Voorhees. There's some swampy areas I think that'll work well with. Uh, I brought my Mando SH Figure Arts, as always. And I brought my Luke Skywalker, SH Figure Arts, love this figure. So I'm gonna put all this stuff back in my bag and just start walking on the trails and see what kind of cool stuff we can find and take some photos. Okay, so yeah, we're out right now. We're looking for some cool stuff to take photos, but how do you just come up with toy photo ideas in general? What's the best way to just think of ideas in general? Well, my best answer for that is to just always keep your mind open all the time every day while you're driving if you're on the bus while you're watching a movie while you're eating dinner just keep your mind open for stuff that could give you an idea you never know you could be walking around and say that puddle hmm, i have an idea for that oh that fork that kind of looks like a trident i could do a toy photo with that just keep your mind open all the time and as long as you're doing that you're bound to come up and get ideas flowing all day long and then when you get it, get the idea, write it down in like your phone or something and just keep a list of all these ideas and then you're good. You got plenty of ideas to go around. Okay, but I've got all these ideas, but I'm just not feeling the motivation to shoot or I'm not feeling the motivation to shoot and I don't have any ideas. Like what the heck do you do then? Well, my best answer for that is just don't try to force any ideas out of yourself. If you're trying to squeeze them out, you're not gonna get any good ideas. They're not gonna be natural. They're just gonna be basic, plain ideas. So just go out, do something you love. Read a comic book, watch a movie, go for a walk. I don't know, play basketball, do whatever you like to do. Don't worry about the toy photos. Just go and do what you love. Eventually, as long as you love toy photography, you're gonna start to miss it. And you're gonna start to get that itch again. And it's gonna come back naturally because you love it that's just the way it is that's what happens with things that you love so if you're feeling that not motivation step away for a little bit go do something else that you love and that motivation will come back to combine that with the other thing i said about the ideas you will absolutely have all the motivation and all the ideas you could possibly want now you just need to find the time but that's <laughs> i wish i could tell you how to get more time but that's a very valuable thing <laughs> Okay, I pass this thing all the time while I'm walking here and I'm always thinking, God, I gotta take a toy photo over here. But look at this. Look at the roots on this tree. This is so cool. There's just like a whole entire like 
city of roots in there. Like, how cool is this? And um, I think I have an idea of what I can do. Okay, so I'm thinking this root right here, because it's got moss on it. I think I might want to have like Ash and his Pokemon kind of walking along here. And I've got the really beautiful bright background, maybe that reflection over there. And then, yeah, just kind of get them walking along here. I think that would be really cool. So I'm gonna set that up. Okay, so I think I've got everything just about all set up. Got my tripod that's very nicely fixed up on this hill here. I have everything balanced perfectly. I cannot believe they're staying like this. I cannot believe Ash is like this. And I've got the sun behind them like this, so it looks really cool. And they're all lined up as straight as I possibly could get them, so they're all in focus with the focus line. And <laughs> I have a whole tutorial on focus if you're interested in that. <laughs> What I'm gonna do is get my little light reflector here and hold it about here. And if you can see, the light is bouncing from here onto the front of them. So I'm gonna get a nice, perfect amount of light. I don't wanna get too much just straight up on there like that because that won't look cool. But if I get it from this angle like that, that'll look really great. And I think it'll look really good so far in camera looking pretty good here are my settings for the photo and I'm gonna take the shot and hopefully it comes out good Time to pack up this stuff and keep on walking and see what else I can find. So just on that photo shoot alone, I had several people walking by and some people asking questions, making comments. I wish I got them on video, but um, yeah, shooting in public can be really weird. That's another question I get a lot. How do you shoot in public when there's people watching? Like, mm, but I get that, I get it. But most of the time people are just kind of interested and genuinely curious on what you have to do and just tell them you're doing toy photography and then that's cool. Now there's a whole group of people that didn't know what toy photography was. Now they know what toy photography is thanks to you. So yeah, just think about that. If anyone remembers, I took a photo right here once in a previous video. I'm curious if anyone can remember which one it is. I'll put it here, see if you remember. Okay, so I found this absolutely incredible mushroom right here, and I, I want to do something with it. And maybe I'll use Mando and Grogu, put Grogu on top of the mushroom or something. I don't know, but um, I'm gonna try and set something up and figure out what I can do with that. Like that's incredible. Like this is this is perfect. Okay, so I've got them sitting like that. Mando's just kind of looking at Grogu sitting on that mushroom. Man, that mushroom's awesome. And I'm praying to the gods of toys that nothing falls down that cliff. But do not worry, I've got a stick right there to hold them up, which is actually working pretty well. And this little dark saber I made with the same kind of stick, just painted it silver, and there we go. So, uh, Grogu's actually poked into the mushroom a little bit, and it's working quite nicely. <laughs> so, uh, the lighting is fantastic, and it's looking quite good on the shot here on the camera here are the settings hopefully it comes out good I might mess around with moving my uh, light reflector in there like this but not sure if I'll need that the lighting's good as is so here we go let's take the shot Okay, another shot down. Let's keep on trucking. Hopefully I still got enough lighting for some more shots. <laughs> okay, so there's a lot of great little swampy areas like this around here. So I'm gonna try and figure out just to get some cool shots with uh, maybe Jason, uh, you know, wading in the water with some fog. I think that'll look really cool. And there's some nice lighting coming through right there. So I'm gonna get something set up. 
Okay, so this is actually quite simple. I just got Jason kind of standing there. <laughs> got the camera right here. It's a little bit darker with what uh, I have my settings at right now. But I'm using just a little bit of good old fashioned atmosphere aerosol. Some of that dramatic lighting. Just a little bit of spritz like and, you know, this is completely safe, which is great. If you want some of this, head to the link in the description. I have 15% off. But, yeah, the shot uh, ended up looking like this. Okay, next tip is always remember where you put down your lens cap. I almost wasted, like, way too much time trying to find my lens cap. And I had it in my bag all along. Almost thought I lost it in the swamp. So that's another tip right there. Oh, hello. Wow, you are getting so close to me. Okay. Um, yeah, see ya. I have a really great idea for a shot over here, but it's really loud, so I'm gonna record all of this with my microphone later. So I decided to get a little bit risky with this one and take this shot of Luke standing right in the middle of the river. It was in the shade this time so I was able to take advantage of some lighting with my LumCube Panel Pro 2.0 and get some green over here and some white on the other side. Having him in this spot definitely made me a little bit nervous so I was happy to take him back again safely but in the end after some editing this is how the shot came out. Man, does anyone else's thighs and like upper leg muscles get like really tired after a toy shoot? I just do so much like bending down and hunching over on my, man, I'm beat. So moral of the story is in my opinion, some of the best ways to get the most organic and fun, great ideas for toy photography are just going out with no expectations and some figures setting up and just shooting without even really thinking about it. And if you're an indoor shooter, just grab a dio or set up somewhere inside and just start shooting. Don't even really think about it. Just go out and do it. And it's also the most fun way too, in my opinion. So I hope you liked the video. Thanks so much for watching. I'll have these photos posted on Instagram at sir.dork. And if you're curious about any of the uh, equipment I'm using, I have that all linked in the description as always. Camera, everything like that. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.